So what we're going to look at in the next few slides is when a reaction is going to be thermodynamically favorable. If we think about that Gibbs free energy equation, it's a combination of both the enthalpy of the reaction, delta H, and the entropy of the reaction. And there's a delicate balance there if you look at the delta H versus the delta S um, to determine the sign of that delta G value. We're going to look at which conditions a reaction would be thermodynamically favorable. So we're going to look at four situations. Situation number one is where the reaction is exothermic and more disordered. So it's releasing heat energy out into the surroundings, a negative delta H and it's becoming more disordered. So maybe it goes from two moles worth of reactants to six moles worth of products, or maybe it starts as a solid and turns into a gas. Something about it is becoming more disordered, more chaotic. So if you have a combination of a reaction that's exothermic and becoming more disordered, and you were to plug that into the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S equation, the thermo, it's going to be thermodynamically favorable regardless of temperature. Because if delta H is negative, and then no matter what temperature you put in that T value there, Remember, we're using temperatures in terms of the Kelvin scale, so there's no negative temperatures possible. So T is always going to be positive. So if T is some positive number, small positive, big positive, doesn't matter. If you're taking a negative delta H minus, when you plug in that T times positive delta S, you're going to subtract a positive number. So negative minus positive, you're going to have a uh, negative delta G no matter what. So that type of reaction, exothermic, more disordered, is going to be thermodynamically favorable, head towards the product side all on its own without any outside intervention, no matter what temperature you run it at. What if we have situation number two, where the reaction is endothermic, it's absorbing heat energy from the surroundings, so a positive H, and it's becoming more ordered. So maybe it's going from three moles of reactants down to one mole's worth of products, or it's going from gas down to solid. If it's becoming more ordered, that's a negative S. Well, if you have a positive H minus a negative S, no matter what, that delta G value is going to be positive. And if delta G is positive, that means it's thermodynamically favorable in the reactance direction to the left. So it's never going to be thermodynamically favorable to the right, to the product side, regardless of temperature. You're subtracting that negative S. Your G is going to be positive no matter what. Hopeless case. You will never get that reaction to head in the product's direction all on its own. You would have to force it to make products. What about scenario number three? What if it's endothermic, positive H, and we're taking the heat energy from the surroundings to make that reaction happen. But we're making something that's more disordered. So two moles of reactants to six moles of products or solid to gas. It's becoming more disordered, positive S. But we require heat energy from the surroundings to go into those chemicals to make the reaction go endothermic. So we have... Uh, uh, math problem here where if delta H is positive and in order for a reaction to be thermodynamically favorable to the product side we have we need a negative delta G we have to look at when could we under what temperatures could we get 
a negative G value in that situation. So we have to think high temperatures, low temperatures. If you could plug in a small number, a big number for T, which type of temperature, a cold temperature, a hot temperature, would result in those thermodynamically favorable conditions, a negative G value. High, because if the temperature T is very big, what that means is you're taking positive H minus a big negative number. So delta H minus big negative, your answer is going to be negative. So hot temperature conditions are the right conditions in order to make an endothermic reaction proceed in the forward direction as long as it's also becoming more disordered. Then we have situation number four. If it's an exothermic reaction releasing heat energy into the surroundings, but it's becoming more ordered. So more ordered, maybe it's starting as three moles of reactants to one mole of product, or starting as gases turning into solids. In other words, have a negative delta S. So if delta H is negative, and delta S is negative, and we go to plug those guys into our equation, and we're trying to figure out how to keep delta G negative to make it thermodynamically favorable in the forward direction. We have to think what kind of temperatures, high or low, would cause that spontaneous reaction to take place. So you're subtracting a negative delta S. You would want T to be as small as possible because if T starts to become too big when you subtract that negative, you'll end up having a very positive, big positive number if T is big. And then your delta G would end up flipping to be a positive number. So we want to keep those low temperatures. So you can get a reaction that's exothermic yet creating things that are more ordered to be thermodynamically favorable in that forward direction as long as you're running that reaction under low temperatures.